It's crazy to think about, but this is actually the 12th apartment that David and I have lived in together since we met 13 years ago. And by far, this is my favorite one. This is the third apartment that we ever lived in in London. In 2010, we moved into a 15 square meter studio. In 2012, we moved into a 40 square meter one bedroom flat. And now after spending five years away from London, we are back again. 2019 in this really lovely 85 square meter apartment. Living room. This is where we host cocktail parties for diplomats and foreign dignitaries. Like in our old Berlin apartments, if you've seen any of our other apartment tours, you can see that we brought all of our furniture to London because I'm so happy that we spent so much time choosing carefully when we did get our first furniture back in Berlin so that we didn't have to like chuck everything out and start anew every time we move. And this is really a pro tip from someone who's moved a lot is to always think about your future apartments when you go furniture shopping. My favorite spot in the apartment is this fireplace that unfortunately doesn't work but it's still a really nice feature. David and I love to sit down here, have a drink in the evenings, play some Trivial Pursuit, and just talk about the future. Super romantic. Everything is always more romantic when you're sitting on the floor. My favorite mirror in the flat is this one, and I use this a lot to take selfies. Actually, the lighting is quite crap back here in the room, but I feel like whenever I take a selfie or a photo in crappy lighting, you seem to like it more over on Instagram. So maybe it's like a, you know, raw, natural, personal kind of feeling that you're into. I'm not sure. We all know the TV's all super ugly, so that's why we went with a projector instead. Couldn't be happier, she's so pretty, and with her, we're watching all of our favorite movies. My proudest moment in this video is the cable corner. And this is the reason why we haven't shown you our apartment yet during these last six months, because it is taking us this long to sort the chaos that was the cable corner. Look at it now, how neat is this? Second favorite selfie mirror. Just like most other London apartments, this has a long corridor down the middle and I need to be able to get from the living room to the office quickly. So this is how we roll. Just kidding, this is not how I get around because this isn't the Google offices. Who's hungry? Our kitchen is weird because it is completely square and has no windows. I like the layout though, it's a good amount of space, even though it is small. And when you do cook in here, it becomes hella hot, which is one thing I kind of like because I'm always a cold one. Cooking in this kitchen is like being in your own personal game of Tetris. You have to close the door to open the fridge. You have to close the dishwasher to open any of the cupboards. And if David and I are in the room together, we kind of have to dance around each other. It is a skill. You all know this, I hate gas stoves. Luckily though, this is an electric oven because if I hate gas stoves, don't even get me started on the ovens. Get ready for my MTV Cribs moment. My kombucha collection. I usually have about between 10 and 20 of these at home just for emergencies because I drink like two per day at least. After you've tried Kivita kombucha, every other brand tastes like water. Our bedroom is about the size of our first London flat. We used to have a loft bed with two armchairs underneath. The kitchen would be over here, a tiny, tiny toilet, a little bit. And now this is where we're sleeping. Just like all Londoners, we don't have enough storage space. And it probably sounds like a really strange combination, but I'm both a fashion influencer and a minimalist. So with storage space this small, my place gets cluttered really easily since fashion is such a big part of my job. So every six or seven months, I usually go uh, over all of my clothes and just declutter stuff to give to charity. It's definitely time for me to do that again. My place is getting swamped with stuff. Who's charity? Do I know her? She's a very well-dressed lady walking the streets of London. That's like the final thing to sort in this apartment, the bedside tables. We did find these uh, online that I really love. They're super minimalist and clean looking, but they're a little bit too big for my side of the bed. So if you do know any like really narrow bedside tables that are minimalist and nice looking, do let me know. Because for now we've been using these like weird ladder things and they're really cute, but not very practical, are they? Time for a toilet break. This bathroom is stupid because it is nice looking and all, but it has both a bathtub and a shower. Who needs that? Can you imagine if they just skipped the bathtub, 
what an amazing space this would be for storage. Instead, we only have this tiny little cabinet and it is just way too small for two people. So now we need to have like stuff out and about and it just looks so messy to me. It really annoys me. First world problems. The mirrors in here though are lush. And this is where I do my affirmations in the morning. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. You will. Follow me on Instagram. Oh, and this is my third and fourth favorite selfie mirror. This is where the magic happens. This is where we do the editing, the emailing, the blood, the sweat and tears. And happy tears. We have moved the table straight up under the window because now we have created this bigger space for David to sit and watch the projector on this wall at night. He's kind of made this into his office and playroom and I've kind of taken over the living room as my office and playroom so now we become one of those couples who sit at the far end of the apartment and what's up each other. Like since I'm an aesthetic minimalist I don't like to have a lot of artwork on the wall because I think it disrupts my field of view or whatever so it can be quite hard to make a house feel homey and warm and welcoming and decorated and not so sterile when you're a minimalist but the three things that I think really work to make a home feel more organic is fresh flowers. I always have fresh flowers at home because I love how luxurious it makes the flat. Also, mirrors. Mirrors don't disrupt any view. It also reflects light, so it makes everything feel bigger, more airy, more light. And they're like tiny pieces of art in themselves because they frame something. So big recommendation to have tons of mirrors. Finally, books. Books are artworks in and of themselves. And which book better to recommend than Simple Matters, aka the prettiest book that ever existed. Okay, now nah, it's not, but it is pretty good. This is the third flat that we made an apartment tour of. We had one of our previous Berlin flat, which is just huge and very practical, and the Berlin flat before that, that was just a crazy place. So I will put links in the description if you guys wanna check that out. We also have a little series called The World's Coolest Houses. So check that out. We have two videos. I'm gonna put them in the description. I hope you like my place. I really do. I'm so happy here, both with the location and the look of it. It's not the most practical, but I do feel really at home. What about you guys? Do you feel at home in the apartment or the house that you're living in at the moment? Or is there something missing? Talk to you down in the comments. And thank you so much for hanging out today, for subscribing and liking, and for finding me on Instagram. And I will see you already next week. Hey do and puss puss. Are you guys going to the vegan camp out next, next week? And I, I was like, oh, we're not that vegan. <laughs> And it was just, you know, I hope it came off the right yeah, way. She, yeah, like, she laughed. It was, I thought it was really funny. Because it's, it's funny because it's true. We're not that vegan. No, we won't, like, go, we won't go to a vegan camp. Yeah, that would I, never happen. I, I,